I just want to talk about some stuff that the Lord has been bringing me back to. That's loud. Um, the Lord's been really bringing it back to me a lot this past year and just kind of uh, this word, this teaching, whatever you want to call it, that he's been giving me and revealing to me is he's just showing me that this is, this is it. This is the method that he's given us for victory. This is the, uh, the truth that he's given us so that we can walk in freedom and power. Um, so... I have a quote from a book. I'm going to read a couple of quotes out of here probably. Uh, it's Watchman Nee, The Normal Christian Life. Um, and this is what he says. Uh, of him are you in Christ Jesus. The Lord God himself has put us in Christ. And in his dealing with Christ, God has dealt with the whole race. Our destiny is bound up with his. What he has gone through, we have gone through. For to be in Christ is to have been identified with him in both his death and resurrection. He was crucified, then what about us? Must we ask God to crucify us? Never. When Christ was crucified, we were crucified. And then later he says, uh, We were crucified when Christ was crucified, for God put us there in him. That we have died in Christ is not merely a doctrinal position, it is an eternal and indisputable fact. Um, having said that, I want to pray real quick. Father, just pray for uh, your word to be spoken through me. I pray for our ears to be open, Lord, to hear this truth, Lord. I know you so passionately and uh, lovingly long for us to understand this so that we can be free. And uh, just pray that we would have um, enlightened eyes and understanding to, to know this truth. In Jesus' name. So, watch Mani there. I think the point he's really trying to get across is something that if we would walk in consistently, I think we could almost get to the point of being uh, so victorious that, that it would just almost floor us. Uh, the uh, Colossians uh, 2, 9 and 10, why don't you turn there? Colossians 2, verse 9, it says, In him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. Uh, This verse says that we have been made complete in Christ. And I think so much of, of my issues, my struggles, my going through life having conflict in my Christian life, not having victory, not having peace, not knowing freedom, I think is all rooted, uh, actually I think I know it's all rooted, in me not really knowing or believing this truth, that I have been made complete in Christ. It's not something that's going to be done, that's something that has already been done. Um, If you look at the way he words that, he says, um, you are complete. Other versions say you have been completed or you have been brought to completion in Christ. So it's, an, it's already a done deal. It's already happened. Christ is already, some of the last words, maybe the last words he said were, uh, it is finished on the cross. He said, it is accomplished. It's done. Um, everything we need for victory over sin, everything we need for peace with God, for freedom from, from our struggles, it's already been accomplished. Um, so this is true because God has put us in Christ. Um, just like Watchman Nee said in that quote that God has put us in him and now we are identified with him. Everything that Christ went through on the cross, we went through with him. So um, <clears throat> An illustration I like to use is if, uh, say, if Robert went out and uh, stole like a couple 
hundred thousand dollar cars and went and burned down like million dollar homes or something, he would owe a huge debt that he probably couldn't pay. Um, and if then I said, okay, Robert, I'm gonna pay it for you, and I wrote him a check and then paid the people off, at the same time I paid those people off, Robert would be paying those people off, right? Because Robert would be in me. In the same way, when Christ was hanging on the cross, taking the full punishment for our sins, we were on the cross taking the punishment for our sins in him. Um, so that is the truth. Like Washington Nee said, it's not just a doctrinal position. It's an eternal, uh, indisputable fact. Um, and it makes all the difference whether we're knowing and believing that or not. Um, I believe that, again, our struggle and lack of victory that we... we uh, I think the majority of the time we're struggling, it comes from us not knowing this. Um, turn to Romans 10. <clears throat> I'm getting over a cold, so I'm kind of snotty. Uh, Romans 10, 6 and 7. Paul is writing, and he says, uh, The righteousness of faith speaks in this way. Do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down from above, or who will descend into the abyss, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth, and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we preach. Um, I believe what he just described here is the heart of, of what could be a believer, an unbeliever, but what is often my heart and it's an unbelieving and doubtful heart. Um, and a lot of times I see what I'm supposed to be doing as a Christian, as a son of God, how I'm supposed to feel toward God, how I'm supposed to feel toward others, my love for God, my love for others, my purity, uh, a zealous desire for the Lord. And I see that this is what I need to be having going on inside me. And then I can have this heart where I don't, I don't immediately know that and then look at Christ's finished work, but I, I know what's required of me, and I start saying, who, like this, who will descend into the abyss to accomplish this for me? Who's going to ascend into heaven? Who's going to do this great thing that needs to be done? This is, I just feel how far off and how incapable I am of doing that. And instead of knowing the finished work of Christ, I, I, I start to ask this. I start to have that, that unbelieving uh, discouraged heart. Um, so I think the, the fruit that we will see in um, not knowing or not, not believing uh, Christ's finished work, um, I think there's a, a sense of burden when, when in following the Lord. There's a sense of that it, we feel a little bit like it's burdensome, like uh, we don't feel the joy of, of following the Lord, but it seems burdensome. His commandments seem burdensome to us. Um, it seems difficult. Uh, lack of peace. We don't have, we don't have peace. We're unsettled in, in our hearts and our minds because we don't know the peace. Christ is our peace, and if we're not knowing his finished work, then we're not going to feel peace with God. Uh, I think the biggest thing is just a struggle with in general, just our own carnality, our own hearts, our own selfish attitudes, our own lack of love, lack of desire for the Lord. Um, so I think all these are fruits of, of what is going to be our experience. Um, I think you can look at the church, uh, the Corinthians church in 1 Corinthians, and you see that they're just pretty much plagued with carnality, uh, fighting each other in court, uh, idolatry, uh, sexual sin, just all sorts of carnality. And in the, I think the third, third chapter, Paul talks about, he says, you've been given the spirit so that you can know what you have been freely given. And so I think their issue wasn't necessarily the sin in them. Uh, the issue was that they weren't knowing what they had been freely given. They weren't knowing who they are in Christ. Um, so the solution, I think, that Paul gives us for this <clears throat> is uh, go to Romans now, turn back to Romans <coughs> uh, 6. <clears throat> and 
And before we read that, I have another quote that I want to read. Uh, Watchman Negan, he says, Oh, it is a great thing to see that we are in Christ. Think of the bewilderment of trying to get into a room in which you are already are. Think of the absurdity of asking to be put in. If we recognize that fact that we are in, we make no effort to enter. If we had more revelation, we should have fewer prayers and more praises. We spend so much time praying for ourselves just because we are blind to what God has done. So kind of going back to my point four, uh, I think our struggle so much of the time, our lack of victory is because, like this illustration, we're already inside the room. God has, by his grace, by his, his gift, it's a gift he's given to us, uh, we're already in Christ. He's put us there. Our struggle comes when we, from, from our own minds, our own our own desire and natural inclination to try to earn our righteousness or by the enemy uh, attacking us and distracting us from the finished work. We, just, we, we spend a lot of time, I think, not knowing that, like Christ said, it is finished. Um, so, Paul's solution, Romans 6. Uh, <clears throat> Romans 6, verse 11. And Paul says, uh, I'll start at verse 8, actually. He says, If we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also... Reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Paul's solution always seems to not be to tell us to try harder or to, if, if, he, if he knows the, the Christians, the people, the church, the body was struggling with carnality, he never says, try to stop doing that or, or you need to stop, but he always starts with reminding them who they are. He always starts with, with here. He says, uh, he says to reckon, reckon yourself, believe and know that you are dead to sin. When Christ died, you died. And now when Christ was resurrected and he now lives to God, you also are in him. So now you also have been resurrected and you are living to God. So he says, he doesn't say to try to make that true. He doesn't say in some future time that's going to be true. And when that happens, then you're going to be free. He says it's true now, so know it, reckon on it, and then you will, you will experience the freedom that is already yours. Um, so he goes on in 12, he says, Therefore do not let sin reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in its lusts. And do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. So we have to be knowing that we are dead, we are dead to sin, we're alive to God, and, and we can choose. We, we have the freedom now because of Christ's finished work. We can make that choice to, uh, like he says, to present ourselves to God, to present our members, to present. Uh, I can. When I got this phone, my prayer was that, that God would empower me to present this phone to him as an instrument of righteousness. Uh, I can do that with my house, with, with everything I have. Let this be an instrument of righteousness that brings glory to you. Um, and that's all possible because of Christ's finished work, because everything we need for, for life and godliness, he's given us um, so uh, Ephesians 5a is another good example um, of Paul's, Paul's solution. Paul's, uh, whenever Paul is trying to motivate the body, whenever he's trying to motivate the church toward uh, righteous living, toward, uh, toward walking in freedom and power, um, he always has a certain order like we kind of talked about in Romans, that he, 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 uh, 
he speaks to them in a certain order. Um, you can kind of look at that here. Uh, Ephesians 5, 8. He says, For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Do you, you notice that order there? He says, you were once darkness, and then he says, but now you are light in the Lord, so walk as children of light. Uh, Paul, you'll never find, I don't think, one time in the New Testament where Paul will say, uh, God really wants you guys to be children of light, so start trying to live that way, and then eventually if you do really good and then keep that up, you're going to become a child of light. He says, you are ch children of light, you have been made that already, so just walk like that. Um, I was talking to Robert and Paul uh, Miller yesterday, and, and Paul, Paul had this good example of this, I think, that, that with a tree, you don't have to tell a tree to be a tree. You don't have to say, tree, you need to uh, uh, sprout out branches, and you need to produce leaves, and you need to get really tall. Uh, a tree just does that. Um, you don't need to tell a cat to meow. You don't need to tell a cat to purr or to shed fur or to do cat things. Um, in the same way, the Lord tells us who we are, and, and God shouldn't have to tell us as sons and daughters of God to, to be righteous. Um, the, natural, the natural life of a son and daughter of God is to, to live obedient to the Lord. Um, so Paul, what he does is he doesn't tell them to try to do these things in order to become this, but he says you are this, so just simply live um, in a way that is consistent with who you are. Um, <clears throat> this is something, something I wrote down about that. Um, uh, Paul always spoke to the church in a specific order when he was motivating them to walk in freedom and righteousness. He always begins his exhortation by identifying them in Christ and describing what they have in Christ and describing who they have been made in Christ so he first tells them who they are, and then he simply tells them to live lives that are cons consistent with who they are. So how, how does this work? Um, it's one thing to, to know this and to know that this is true, um, but I think still we need the Lord's help to actually lay hold of this and to walk in it. Um, uh, Romans 12... <coughs> Uh, Romans 12, 1, he says, and 2, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Uh, the key part there, he says, uh, Where'd it go? Yeah. Do not be conformed to this world, but he says be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The way that this is going to become real in us, the way that we're going to experience this, Christ's work is finished. We are in him. We have died with him, and we have been raised with him. Um, but we need our minds renewed to know that, and I think the Lord is in a process, and I think it's a lifelong process of, 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 us, of us learning to, uh, to know that more, of us learning to stay in that longer, of, of us knowing his finished work. Um, but, but I think the whole battle is up here. I think the whole battle is in our minds. It's in, uh, it's in the way we think, and so I think the Lord is changing the way we think. He's changing the way we think about, about us needing to work for peace with him. For us, we feel like we need to work to be better. We feel like we need, we think we need to strive and, and try harder. Um, the Lord is changing the way we think. He's renewing us, like this says, in knowledge. He's, he's renewing our minds, changing the way we think so that we know and we start to consistently think in, a, in accordance with what is true about Christ and what he has done. And the more we increase in our minds with the knowledge 
of Christ's finished work, uh, the more we just, our minds are transformed. And that, that's what changes us from, from glory to glory. As we see Christ, we're transformed. Um, and the fruit of that, I believe, that, that is where freedom comes from. That is, that is where we find true freedom. That's where we find freedom from the burden and any sort of dominion of sin over us uh, when we know that we have already been made free. Um, so <clears throat> I guess my simple encouragement uh, with all that is just that you would be, that we would all be choosing this uh, this week and, and learning to do that choosing to, to stop when we're, when we're striving, when we're trying to work for what Christ has already worked for, um, that we had learned to stop doing that and that we had learned to trust. Uh, I think like Sam talked about maybe a month ago, uh, stop working on your worker or something, but work on your truster, um, that we would choose to know and believe that it is finished and that we would rest in that. Um, and I know, I'm convinced that this is, in the same way God's provided one way for us to have his righteousness, which is by the finished work of Christ, he's provided one way for us to have victory over sin and to have freedom, and that is the finished work of Christ. Um, so my encouragement is for you to know that. Um, second encouragement is that you would be seeking the Lord's revelation of this. It takes his revelation in your mind to open, open our eyes to be able to see this by faith. So pray into that and be asking and seeking and knocking at his door um, to know this more. Um, and at the same time I say that, learn also to be not always asking. Uh, learn when you're asking for something that he's already given you. So learn also with asking to do it with thankfulness, knowing uh, that his grace has already supplied it. Um, and the last thing is to be ready for attack because I know and am convinced that the enemy already has plots and schemes and, and plans that he's already been carrying out in my life to keep me from knowing this, and he's doing it in your lives. And so uh, be, be sober and be alert and be watchful for that and be recognizing when when the enemy is trying to get you out of that place of knowing that, um, because that is, that is the victory. That is where his head has been crushed already, is when we're knowing that. Um, so he doesn't want you to know this stuff. Um, so that's all I got. So I'm going to pray. Father, I just thank you for uh, the finished work of Christ. God, I thank you that Christ has become uh, our righteousness, our sanctification, and our redemption. I just pray for uh, the eyes of our understanding to be enlightened, Lord, that we would know and perceive and grasp the love of Christ uh, that is already ours. And I just pray this week that we'd be walking in freedom, that we'd be walking as sons, uh, Lord, that you'll free us from any slave mentality. I pray in Jesus' name. I pray in Jesus' name. I pray in Jesus' name.